What's good, y'all? So this one came from someone in my Discord chat that wanted me to speak on bullying. And more specifically to their situation, they're going to high school next school year, so they just said, hey, look, I'm just trying to be mentally prepared for everything, and I got you. But I do want to start off with a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm someone that's never been bullied, okay? So if I, if I speak a little bit too brazenly on something, if I speak a little bit too proudly too oh, like, this is all you got to do on something, then just take some of my advice with a grain of salt, okay? However, it's like I'm wise enough, I'm old enough to know what bullying looks like. And I also grew up with a guidance counselor for a middle school, you know what I'm saying? So I've been hearing this my entire life. I've been seeing it in my world. You know, in middle school, there was some, there was like, a, like, like two or three guys that were always picking on this kid next to me. I never even knew the kid. We were never friends or nothing like that. But every day, like clockwork, they would just show up, mess with this kid. He would look like he was being put down and like really sad until one day, like I just like, you know what? I looked around real quick, saw no teachers, grabbed the, the main bully's head, smacked it into a locker and just walked away. That's all I did. And from that day forward, they never messed with me because they thought him and I were together. You see what I'm saying? Now, before we begin again, another disclaimer. I am not here to advocate for any type of physical violence. I'm not the one that's saying to, to face violence for the violence. However, in some of y'all's situations, some of it gets out of hand and you have to know how to protect yourself when and if that situation does arise. Okay? Even though I'm a pacifist, I am about defending yourself. And I, I want that to be very clear. But when, you, when it comes to defending yourself, I'm not saying show up to school with a weapon. I'm not showing, saying show up to school with the glizzy. I'm saying, you know, when it's time, when it's time for you to act, you, you, you play chess with it. You know, you don't go like the barbarian route that the bully has gone. You start to play chess with their mind. If your bully is someone that has to inflict physical harm on you, you know, slap the books out your hand, push you around, slap you up, you know, that type of stuff. Then I'm saying that you rise above them. OK, you don't act like a caveman like they are. You don't act like a cave woman, I guess, like they do. You know, you you rise above them and you outthink them. All right. But we'll get to that in a little bit. You know, it was kind of interesting when I saw this one, because like right now, it, it's like I'm in a place where like I just feel untouchable. I feel powerful. I feel amazing everywhere I go. So then when I got this, uh, when I got this like prompt, if you will, when I got this message to speak on this subject, it was kind of funny because it put me back into like my little high school bus. I remember in the, uh, my first day of freshman year, we were sitting in the back of the bus with all of my friends from middle school. Like, yo, you ready for this, bro? Like, you know, like, blah, 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 blah. And like, and there was just a couple of people that I knew, you know, that were like in my area. And like, it was kind of interesting because I remember I would just sit there and I just, I did, I, I heard everyone else talking. But, like, I just, I didn't really care to talk to anybody. I was just like, yo, like, I'm going in a completely new situation, a completely new environment. No, nah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put my head down and we're just going to coast. That's all we're going to do. No one's going to pay attention to me because I also believed in the myth of Freshman Friday, right? You know, and for those of you, like, I'm not sure how outdated that myth is. I'm not sure if that's something that's still spread around in schools. But Freshman Friday was a little bit of an urban myth. Where the seat, like all the upperclassmen were pretty much, pretty much pick on slash bully the freshmen because it's just like, that's what you do. Hi, freshmen, we're going to mess with you, right? And so like, I can't lie, I was a little worried about that, but I was mentally preparing for that. And even back in those days, like I was a band geek. So I was like, yo, if you mess with me, I'm going to smack this trumpet across your face. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm a band geek, but this is a whole like, you know, little, little seven, eight pound piece of brass I'm going to smack across your mouth. You know what I'm saying? I was like, try me if you want to. But nevertheless, I was just like, you know what? I don't want no drama. I'm going to just put my head down and go, right? One of the things that y'all need, need to take into consideration, especially the young people that watch my channel, especially those of you that are dealing with bullying, is that when you grow older and you go backwards, especially for some of you that have, uh, like that you are the older sibling and you have younger siblings, and I'm an only child, so I can't really speak on it. But like when you are older and you look back at the youth, you quickly realize that some of these young kids are straight up assholes. Can you can you can't dumb it down any other way. Some of these kids are straight up assholes. Now, there's multiple reasons for this. Number 1, they just don't realize that their impact of their actions on how other people feel. They get a laugh out of it, the people around them get a laugh out of it, so that's just it. They don't, they don't take into consideration that they are really driving a deep, dark, 
pit in your soul of depression, anxiety, fear. They don't know what they're doing, right? But then also, too, there's some of these people that are being hurt at home. It's the, it's the, for some of you young people, this might be a new phrase for you, but the, like people that have been out here in the world a little bit longer have heard this many a times. Hurt people hurt people, right? So because they are hurt, the only way that they can make themselves feel better is to inflict pain on you, to make you feel lesser than. So if they drop you down beneath them, haha, I now stand over this person. I'm better than him. And that makes me feel better. You see what I'm saying? Once again, a very immature mindset that some people don't even grow out of into their adulthood. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Right. And then also, too, there's some people it's, it goes back into the immaturity. It's just another uh, degree of expression where they're actually come from healthy, happy homes. They have everything they want. But they are like, you know, there's someone that like they grew up like, you know, they got built faster. Like my friend, my friend in like damn near fifth grade of elementary school was already starting to grow a beard. You know what I'm saying? And then in middle school, the man had like a full beard. You know what I'm saying? Like we call him the, gro the, the, the grown, uh, what was it? The young old man. That's like what we call him or something like that. Because like, yo, how do you have a beard in middle school? <laughs> you feel me? And then he was always the strongest one in high school, right? But actually, you know what? I'll use him as an example to get back into my point. Hopefully I don't get too random. You know, if you're dealing with somebody that is physically stronger than you, like even if you wanted to stand up and fight for yourself, but like you just know there's no freaking way. You know, I had that friend. Now, he didn't bully me or anything like that, but I knew that if he ever were to turn his attentions to in a negative way towards me, I'm like, yeah, that fist fight would not go in my favor. Because like I said, he was just a grown ass man, basically in middle school. <laughs> right. What you have to do, as, as I was saying, is you have to rise above it. You have to begin to move in a way that's like okay let's play chess now there's there's like a what is it degrees of degrees of initiation i don't know there's levels to this shit let's just put it like that right you do not resort to violence as your first step you don't you try your best you try your damn hardest to not resort to violence right if you are dealing with a bully every single day they're picking on you every single day they're they're calling you out of your name every single day they're calling you a very very mean nickname and such you know, what you have to really do is, number one, address them. Hey, yo, bro, why you keep picking on me, bro? Why can't you do it by yourself? Why you always have to have your lackeys like this is an 80s, like an 80s coming of age film? You know what I'm saying? Ha, huh, isn't that right, guys? High five, high five. Huh, yeah, I'm Chad. Huh, yeah, I'm funny. Huh, people like me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, the girls like the assholes and stuff like that. It's like, but why can't you do it by yourself? You know, it's like, and then, like, you know, there's always the people say it to my face, depending on how brave you are. You know, but once again, we're not here to resort to violence. But once you, one of the things that you're quickly going to understand is that bullies are very easily triggered or bullies are very, very quick to cower when confronted because they tend to pick on people that are weak. They tend to pick on people that will not fight back. Why would they want to pick on someone that's stronger than them? Why would they pick on someone that's willing to fight back and defend themselves? Why would they fight back with the person that could roast them worse than the joke that they've been calling out? You see what I'm saying? You see, there's so many different ways to fight without putting your hands on anybody, right? If someone's calling you, let's just say beaver tooth or something like that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, cool. It's like, well, at least I got all of my teeth. What you doing with that gap in your mouth? Ooh. And then they go, oh, they're picking on you because you have something that they want. You see what I'm saying? That, like that, that's the way that I look at things. Bullies are only just projecting their own internal fears. Like just go look at um a Key and Peel skit. Key and Peel, Key uh, Key K E Y and Peel, P E E L E, and it's like the over aware bully or something like that. I forgot what the, like the exact title of the video was called, but just type in key and peel bullying and you'll see like, you know, it's pretty much like a very exaggerated version of what's going on in the minds of most bullies. You see what I'm saying? Going back to the hurt people, hurt people, you know, because they're being hurt at home. You never know the situation that a lot of these kids around you in your cafeteria, walking the same halls as you, some of your best friends uh, in your, at the, sitting at the desk right next to you might be going through a completely rougher experience than you at home. You see what I'm saying? They might come to school, ha ha, kiki, goo goo, ga ga, like, you know, real, real funny, happy and chipper. But at home, they're living in hell. 
That's why they're so happy when they get to school. You see what I'm saying? You have to become a little bit more aware of people's situations. We all saw the kid in school that always wore the same clothes every single day. Why? Ha ha, he doesn't have clothes. Ah ha ha, he, he's always wearing the same shoes. Ha ha, his shoes have holes in them. Yeah, because he doesn't have money to afford the new things that you have. So are you going to become the bully that's always joking them? You know, I look back at, at some of the things that even I did just out of pure immaturity. I'm like, why did I condone that? Why did I stay? Why didn't I stand up for that person? You know, because there was a in high school, mind you, high school, like sophomore, junior year. There was a girl in our class and you, they used to walk around and call her Moose Girl. I don't even know where that nickname came from. But nevertheless, they used to walk around, and call her Moose Girl. Now, I would. And see, I'm, I'm also passive with it because like, you know, one of the things that I didn't do was I didn't stand up for somebody, right? I didn't stand up for that individual. Even though I didn't know her, I never called her that to her face. So I didn't feel like I was bullying, but I was condoning the bad behavior of those of the of my classmates by like referring to her. Hey, yo, you talk to so-and-so? Who's that? Moose girl? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I shouldn't even said that. I'm like, nah, that's, I, I actually forgot her name. What was this called? Her? Emily it's like Emily you know the one that's in our in our uh, global studies class the one that's in our Spanish class blah 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 Emily you know what I'm saying one of the things that you need to understand as well for those of you that are not being bullied is you need to help stand up for those who can't defend themselves as well y'all know the big thing about my channel is like about empowerment being able to handle things on your own right but sometimes you, the innocent bystander, needs to be the one that helps, that steps up and say, hey, leave them alone. You know, yes, you are putting yourself in harm's way. Yes, you might get sucked into the so-called bullying, but you need to understand something. You're going to remember, you're going to remember being the one that stepped up to help somebody rather than being the one that just sat by and watched. You see what I'm saying? The hell, a lot of adults live in that way right now. When someone needs to call 911 for, oh, there's a hummingbird. Sorry. <laughs> well, like, you know, when, when someone needs to call 911 in like an emergency situation out here in the real world, there's this thing called the bystander effect because they assume that someone else is going to do it. No, be the one that steps up to protect people, you know, protect and empower people so things don't get out of hand. If you see something nipping in the bud, yo, who are you talking to like that? Would you want me to talk to you like that? Okay, then leave them alone. Go pick on somebody your own size. You've heard that phrase before. There's a reason for it because, like I said, bullies tend to pick on people that they can get the. They tend to pick on people that they can get away with it. You see what I'm saying? Like they 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 get on the people that they will not be able to fight back. They're not as funny as them. They're not as witty as them until they're proven otherwise. You see what I'm saying? You know, but for those of you like to homie that was in the Discord chat specifically for those of, if you're like worried about Freshman Friday, I'm not sure if that's still a myth. That's still going on. Hello to the bugs in the trees. <laughs> but like, you know, I'm not sure if that's still a myth that runs around in schools and whatever. But nevertheless, it's it's a myth. OK. You know, Freshman Friday does not exist. However, bullying does. OK. So we talked about it very broadly. So what do you do if you're being bullied? OK, let me try to give this is where like I have to throw the disclaimers one more time. I'm one of these people that I never stood for this type of stuff. Like, I'm not sure if I said it in this take, but nevertheless, in middle school, there was someone bullying something, somebody right next to me. And I yeah, told you, like, what are you going to remember yourself for in this in this period of time where once again, this is not the best move to do. But like I looked around this every single day, this person was getting bullied, 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 bullied by these like by these two or three guys. And every single day, like clockwork, they'd be here in between bells, ha ha, blah, blah, slap the books on the ground, like literally like a stereotypical movie. And they got to the point where I got sick of it. I looked around, saw no teacher, so I didn't get in trouble. And then I grabbed the bully's head and just slammed it into a locker and just walked away. Didn't say a word, didn't do anything. I was just out. And that dude never messed with him ever again. Now, once again, that is not the best move. I could have, I could have said something first. I could have got assistance from a teacher or counselor, whatever. Speaking of which, you know, it's like I grew up with a counselor. So forgive me if this sounds a little bit more robotic. OK, but the first step is letting an adult know, especially if you're in school. And once again, we'll talk about adult, you know, adult life and such. But especially in school, just go grab a teacher, bro. OK, you know, they always say snitches get stitches. It's always the people that are doing the bad things that say snitches get stitches. And even if people find out that you snitch, it's like so it's like and people are looking at you funny. But OK. 
you know, that's when you really have to stand up for yourself. Okay, you're going to look at me crazy because I, I ratted so-and-so out. So I'm just supposed to sit here and let him keep bullying me. Yeah, that's that, that's what I'm supposed to do. All these kids are going to look at you like you're dumb. Like, they're like oh, but, well, I mean, but you, you should have just, you should have just handled it. You should have just fought him. Once again, you're dealing with immaturity. Just ignore it. I know that sounds that's easier said than done, but just ignore that type of stuff. Go get you some assistance. Go get you a teacher. Go get you a counselor. What's typically going to happen is you're going to tell this adult something, and they're going to ask you who. Hey, how you doing? They say they're going to ask you who was it. You know, and I know it's going to be like a level of hesitation where you're going to be like, snitches get stitches. If I tell them, they're going to do this, but you have to. Because how are they supposed to help you if they don't know who's messing with you? And by the way, like most teachers are going to be able to know who's messing with who. They just try to stay out of it until things get too serious. But nevertheless, okay, go grab your teacher. Because then what's more than likely going to happen is this thing called conflict mediation. Conflict mediation, where you're gonna you're gonna get some help. You're gonna you're gonna tell a teacher, they're gonna get you and the person bullying you, the person or people bullying you, and they're gonna sit you down and have a talk. What you're quickly gonna realize is a lot of these kids do not understand what they are doing to you. They don't understand how they are making you feel, and and basic off of those like some of those variables I presented in the beginning. So usually, as what my mom said, 80 to 90 percent of the time, the problem stops right there. OK, because that might just be an eye opening experience for them as well. OK, now I'm also a realist too. my mom's a guidance counselor and she's in the school where it's like it's kind of like it's like a little bit of a vacuum. It's a controlled environment. Now, I'm kind of the part I'm, I'm always ready for y'all to be adaptable. I'm ready for you to roll with the blows of life and be prepared to handle them accordingly. OK, so let's just say you try to do that and the bullying doesn't stop. It, it actually intensifies where you got to do. OK, you're on your own. So you have to look at this as a challenge. OK, I have my own mini boss in the video game right now. I have my own mini boss. So what am I going to do? How am I going to beat this boss? You might beat them the first try. It might take you a few tries. But this is what you got to do. You have to begin to play chess in your mind. If you have to change up your schedule a little bit, change up your schedule. You're not running. OK, you're not picking up your stuff and running down the halls to, to, to get away from your assailant. You know, what I'm saying that's not what you're doing. What you're doing is you're positioning yourself accordingly. You're positioning yourself for success. Let's just say let's just say 50, 20 minutes into like before the end of class. Right. 20 minutes before the end of class. Hey, can I run to the bathroom real quick or set up an arrangement with your teacher? Hey, look, man, look, listen, I tried to do this and I keep getting bullied. I don't want you to get involved, but this is just my way of, you know, handling this problem on my own. A lot of teachers will respect that. So 20 minutes before class, you know, at like different times, you'll probably work out with your teacher. Hey, can I go to the bathroom, run to your locker, get the books that you need for the next class, and then just come back. You know, just like swap out the books that you need and then go and then go to your locker, get your books and then you have and then go back to class. So you can just go from that class to that class. And you can completely avoid your bully. Right. You know, also, too, if that's not an option for you or you got that asshole teachers, like, oh, no, leave into the bathroom in my class, you know, that type of stuff. There's always that teacher. Then what you need to do is like, you know, once again, like position yourself near the teachers, because most people are always going to stop when teachers are around. So just use them as your little shield. OK, but once again, that's also that's also kind of re you relying on somebody else what happens if that teacher ain't there that day what happens if you know the, the bully schedule changes up as well what happens okay so then like another thing that i can recommend is while you're doing these like these little things and once again you figure out your own swag you figure out your own moves you know but then like one of the things that you need to try to do is you need to better yourself in one way or another for me i was always very witty I was very funny. So if you have someone that's picking on you, let's just say you have weird hair. I mean, look, I'm, I'm rocking these goggles. Now, I'm a grown ass man that like likes these little steampunk goggles. And I'm about to be rocking them like I'm like I'm season one Naruto or something like that. You know, but hey, I like being different. You know, like that's also the other thing. If people are joking you, don't feel some type of way. Own it. Embrace it. You know what I'm saying? Like if if uh, uh, like, like, like let's just say you got buck teeth. You know, you got two big old rabbit teeth and people, oh, rabbit boy, rabbit boy, rabbit boy, huh? Reach into the backpack and grab you a carrot. 
I promise you. Ra like, go into it and grab you a kid. Rabbit boy, rabbit boy. <laughs> what up, Doc? You know what I'm saying? People going to start laughing. Yo, this dude kind of funny. And then you're going to become the funny dude. Now, don't let that be your shtick. Don't let that become your new identity. You know what I'm saying? But say, like, yo, you can't mess with me. Call me what you want. I'm going to make it something. You know what I'm saying? Throughout high school, I walked around with a stuffed animal hanging out my backpack in senior year of high school. Right? Senior year of high school, I was walking around with a stuffed animal, aka the sock monkey that you see in a lot of my videos in the back in the background of my videos. It's like I walked around with a sock monkey. If I can do it, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've always said, I'm a cool dork. I'm a cool nerd. That's all I am. I'm a nerd. I'm a dork. You know, but I just always make things work for me. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, so let's just say you try all these types of things and it doesn't work out for you or you don't have the charisma yet or you don't have the confidence to try to pull something off like that. You know, first of all, actually, before before I keep going, I actually want to go back on that point a little bit about like leaning into things and being yourself. Always be yourself. You know, there was like like we every high school. And for those of you that are older, could definitely attest every high school, every school had that kid that ran through the halls like Naruto. And that was just the kid. You know, like, that's the Naruto kid that's just running through with his arms behind his back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you just you just laugh at him, but like, you know, hey, he's he's living his life. He's doing what he's doing. I ain't never seen not one person joke that individual because guess what? He's living his truth. What are you doing? You know, and sometimes you have to take a personal accountability because I understand I might be getting above some of y'all heads. But like I'm very big about life will tell you what's going on in your life. So if you're being picked on, that shows resistance in your world, in your mind somewhere. So where are you holding yourself back? You see, when you're focused on your own growth, when you're focused on how amazing you are as a young person, as an old person, anyone watching this video, it's like you realize how no one can touch you anymore. No one can mentally damage you because you're comfortable with yourself. If you're being bullied on the outside, this is your reminder from life to get in touch with your own inner strength, wherever, whatever that turns into, okay? So get comfortable with yourself. Like I said, I'm, I'm rocking these things. I'm, I am 28 years old and I like stuff like this, but I'm also like, y'all know me, I'm an old man in my head. I'm a 28 year old walking or that that's plans on walking around with a cane because I like the way they feel in my hand. They make me feel excited. That's my truth. You see what I'm saying? I walk around with the canes. So I can, I got spinning around. I can point at stuff. I could do whatever, you know. But I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna start my collection of that here shortly because that's something that I want to do on my inside. That's something that helps me freely express myself. The got the steampunk goggles, a cane, you know, the crystals, the necklace, the jewelry. Eventually, I'm gonna get more tattoos. Now I can't say you know young people get no tattoos, but nevertheless, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like that's how I express myself in my adulthood. But like I still want to express myself the way I am and even the way that I get down. I get looks from people like, who is he? Maybe he should grow up. Does it look like I'm going to let you worry about, or does it look like I'm going to let you have any power in my life? Okay, then you go about your merry day because I'm never going to see you again. Your little inputs about my life is just your projection that you don't. your life isn't full enough. If your life was full, you wouldn't be worried about mine. And that's that's the type of stuff that happens with bullying in schools. Now, yeah, let's just say there gets to a point where like the bullying gets out of hand, right? And they're inflicting significant, you know, levels of harm on you. You know, you tried to, uh, you tried to get an adult, you tried friends, you tried to run, you tried to, the, no, no matter how much you run and hide, no matter, da, 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 and it came to a point that you actually had to defend yourself. Let's, let's get this understood. Once again, I am not an advocate for violence, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Now, no matter what it is, you are not. And I want to make this very clear. You are not to show up to school with a weapon. You are not to show up to school with your daddy's gun that you broke out of his case. You are not to show up to school with a knife, with a blade. You are not. But I'm not saying that you can't improvise with the stuff around you. If it gets to the point where people are giving you black eyes, where people are jumping you for no reason, I've experienced this type of stuff. You got to do what you got to do. Now. One of the things that I learned, and this might sound like some straight up anime stuff, so you have to apply it to the real world. But one of the things that I always realized is like one of my things that let me give it to you like this, because I, I experienced my own version of bullying in college. OK, but it's more race related for the adults out there. It's race related. I told the story before. 
But there was a time when I was walking to college. I might have a flashback. I might go dark in the story, but forgive me. But um, there was a time in college where I was walking to my friend's apartment, right? And there was these two guys, two big dudes, bigger than me at that time. You know, they were like bigger than me. And like the, they were like, hey, you know, and I'm not going to go into the su super details, but hey, get off our sidewalk, blah, 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 blah. And it got to the point where they were about to attack me, right? What I did was like at first I like I threw a threat out there to make them think a little bit. And then I was just like, hey, look, bro, I'm not the one. It's like, but at that time I did carry knives on me because this, I told, I'm, I'm telling you from my mistakes, it puts you at an unnecessary level of danger. If you're here, if you're holding a weapon, you actually inflict harm on somebody. That's why I'm telling you, do not carry weapons like that. I promise you, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, at this point, like I had to draw, I had to draw my knife on somebody. Right. But the thing is like the, before I had to get to that point though, one of the things that I told them though, I was like, or not, I didn't tell them this, but in my mind, all you have to do is hurt one person. Because usually the lackeys are cowards. They're hanging out with the bully because they don't want to be bullied themselves. So what's the safest place right under their nose? Helping them out, condoning them, laughing at them. Their lackeys are the weakest ones because they're just as scared as you are. But they just don't want to be in your position. So that's how they, that's how they, uh, uh, that's how they adapted. That's how they uh, protected themselves. You know, so all you got to do is get one person. You know, one of my biggest threats is, look, there might be three of y'all, four of y'all. All I got to get is one of you and you're going to remember me. You know, if you don't back down in the, in the in the eyes of like your oppressor, if you don't back down in the presence of fear, that fear will get returned back to them. And they'd be like, yo, this this guy's a little bit different. Oh, wait, hold on. I might I might be thinking twice. So when they step to you and you just don't move, you don't you don't flinch, you don't do nothing. Hey. They're going to think twice about that. Let's just say that they smack you in the face. Bah! They get you a good one. And you stand back up. They hit you again. They push you back down. You stand back up. Eventually, they're going to be like, yo, why is this kid keep getting back up? Why is this dude keep getting back up? You just wipe the blood from your mouth. You done? Are you done? You hit like a bitch. You done? And they're going to get, yo, you're, you're crazy, man. Hey. You know what I'm saying? I've actually seen that one done in, in person. It wasn't me. It wasn't my experience, but I've seen somebody else. This is back when I was in my bystander days. You see what I'm saying? It's like, once again, because that shows strength in a different way. You know, they're going to realize, why am I hurting this person? He's not even fighting back. I'm hurting this person. They're not even doing anything. That's like, that starts to get them back into their own head because they start to have that negative self, self talk. And you put them back in there. How does he keep getting up? Why does he keep getting up? Why is he this and that? Why is he? <laughs> and they get wrapped up into their own world. And all you did was stay in there. You know, one of the questions I proposed to the, uh, my channel back in the day was like, would you rather be an unstoppable force or an unmovable object? And this is kind of why. This is an example of being that unmovable object. You see what I'm saying? They are the quote, quote, unstoppable force. But what happens when you can't be stopped? What happens when you can't be moved? What happens when you can't be swayed? What happens when you can't be bullied into doing something that you don't want to do? That shows that, they, that you have a level of strength that they can't fathom. And that's usually when people tend to back off. You see what I'm saying? Also, too, let's talk about something real quick. I almost, I almost forgot to talk about it damn near 30 minutes in. But that's internet bullying, right? Internet bullying is something that is 100% your control. If you are being bullied on the internet, that is when you utilize this little function that's in every cell phone, every app, every whatever. You click on these people's names, you hit block or mute, and therefore you can no longer get their messages. But before you do that, you remember that this is the internet. If someone is doing bad things to you on the internet, if someone is uh, internet bullying you, screenshot, screenshot, click, screenshot, got you. Make sure you have their name. Make sure you have them looking stupid, you know, on the internet. And then just be like, okay, and just save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. You know, because the, what you what you realize is what, like at first you were letting their words affect you, right? When they were saying negative things on the internet, you were just like, I'm not doing this. this is stupid. I hate when they talk to me like this. Why do they pick on me? But when you switch it around and you just let them feed their own demise, it becomes funny to you. Oh, you're fat. Oh, you're stupid. Oh my God, you're so skinny. No guy is ever gonna like you. No girls ever gonna like you. You don't get no bitches. Blah blah blah. Dog. First of all, I know that this is real because 10 year olds type this to me, a grown ass man on the Internet. You think they ain't going to do it to an easier target like you? 
So what do you do? Screenshot, 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 save it in a folder, save it in a, in a thing in your phone. You know what I'm saying? And then when things get out of hand, hey, excuse me, I got this dude that's been tr trying, to, but you just say, you know, this person has been bullying me for a long ass time. Well, how do you know? Is, do, is there any evidence of this? <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. And then they're going to be looking really. And once again, you do not become the person that blackmails, you know, but this is you defending yourself. This is this is just evidence to your claim. Right. You don't you don't use this again. I'm going to show this to people. If no, no, no. They already dug their own grave. You just you just you just sprinkle the last little bits of dirt on top. Um, hey, um, Miss So and So, look, I've been dealing with bullying for the past couple of weeks from so and so. Well, how do you know? Is it really bullying? Is Miss So and So? Here you go. I'm showing them right here. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my God, this is a big deal. And now that you have the evidence, they can't get out of it. Now, one of the things that you have to understand, like I said, you can't rely on this sometimes. This is me just speaking from a lone wolf perspective. You can't rely on these teachers sometimes because they have a protocol that they have to follow okay so you're going to expect them to like to yank the kid out you know they're going to you're going to they're going to make them stop sometimes it doesn't it doesn't happen the first try so you have to be prepared for like the teachers not really doing anything and i'm just being real with you okay so like always have the evidence if, if they're never getting the oh, how did it go never stop your enemy from destroying themselves though once you have the once you come with the claim usually schools take that very seriously find you a teacher that really does care about you that really does care about the students but then when you have the evidence there's nothing that they can do you know it's like internet bullying is something that is really a it's like internet bullying is something that is it's like a lot of people have this anonymity right anonymity is anonymousness on the internet they have these usernames you know that they they can hide behind and they can pick on people they can make fake accounts so they can say all the stupid stuff they want so they don't get caught you feel what i'm saying but like you know if you can line up the two if someone calls you biscuit mouth every day i'm just making stuff up to be simple and pg ish and i, I know i let a few words fly but you know say like they call you biscuit mouth every day and you hate it but then all of a sudden it's like it's no longer paul on the internet on his facebook internet you know or instagram calling you biscuit mouth but some random profile shows up and they just keep calling you biscuit mouth out of nowhere I wonder who this new profile is that has, you know, zero followers, zero following, zero people, but they're only here to mess with me. You see what I'm saying? It's like you have to be able to go onto your uh, Sherlock Holmes, you know, bag, your, your, your FBI detective bag and be like, OK, I could put two and two together. And now I'm just accruing evidence in a different way. You see what I'm saying? So you defend yourself with information. Knowledge is power. Information is power, even for you young people out there. You know, now it's like when it comes to certain things, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with retreat. There's nothing wrong with running in the physical situations. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, a lot of people say, you're running, haha, ha, coward. No, I'm running because I'm accruing more information. I'm running because I can fight you on another day. Sometimes too now, this is the last part and I leave, I leave this to the end, okay? Because the people, oh, the, the violence and most of the people that are too, uh, too immature or too impatient have already clicked off, Okay. Sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. Sometimes you have to go fisticuffs. I'm going to be real with you. You know, one of the things that people don't understand is like people always say, violence is not the answer. Sometimes there's no other way. Sometimes things are getting so dire that you have to go in deep and it's just, it's just time to wild out. One of the things that you need to understand is it's, you have to defend yourself and you have to protect yourself. If you find yourself in a life or death situation, if physical harm is coming your way, it's time to fight. I'm just being real with you. It's time to fight. And the, one of the easiest things, if you're ever dealing with someone bigger than you, you need to scrap something in your mind right now. Kicking someone in the balls, that's a cheap shot. Well, bullying someone is just as cheap. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just fighting fire with fire. If someone is bigger than you and stronger than you, they are not invincible. Okay? It's like the easiest ways is balls, throat, eyes. Okay? If you could get into some movie star stuff, if you clap both ears at the same time. I'm not, hold on. I'm not sure if I can, if I can get this real quick. Yeah, I got to hold this in my, okay, cool. But right, if you clap both of the ears, once again, if like you kick them in the balls, they bend over and you can clap them in the ears. <laughs> and you can clap them in the ears. That disorients them. You see what I'm saying? Learn, uh, like I would recommend going on YouTube and learning like pressure points. 
Okay, you know, like kick him in the balls, if especially if it's a man, kick him in the balls. That's that's every man's weakness. Boom, that makes them that makes them hunch over. They can't breathe. They're now defenseless. Both of their hands are covering up their junk, right? Then while they're lower down, chop them in the throat. It's a chop. We're not here to inflict like super super harm because once again, you're young, you're kids, you're middle school, high school, maybe even college. You know what I'm saying? You're not here to kill nobody. You're just here to. Get away from the situation. Once you have gotten them down to the point that they can no longer fight, walk away. That's it. So even maybe the ball kick might be it. Bah! And just walk away. You know what I'm saying? But once again, when you fight fire with fire, what happens with fire? Fire spreads. And this person may be very angry. This person may be trying to get revenge. You may have embarrassed them. And they have to save their ego. This is why I say do not resort to violence. Yes, sometimes that violence is enough to break it into their minds. That, oh, I can't mess with this person anymore. And sometimes that's it. But sometimes they're going to come back with a vengeance as well. You see what I'm saying? I'm being real with this advice here. Because, you know, when people get violence, when people, get, or when people resort to violence, things happen. When, when, when people get embarrassed, especially in, fr in front of a lot of people, it is what it is, you know? It's like, and this isn't something I'm really trying to, like, get y'all to do. This is why I saved it for last. This is why I saved it for 30 minutes in, you know? But it's like, even though this is still outside of my era, it's like sometimes I believed I was born in the wrong in the wrong era. Back in the days, like, you know, back in my parents' day, for example, if you didn't like somebody, you just said, square up. You know, fisticuffs, you fight it out. Win or lose, that's it. Because, like, if there, was a, there, was, there used to be honor amongst men, especially. There used to be honor amongst men where you would fight it out. Boom, boom, boom. When the fight's over, it was done. You grab each other up and then that was it. But it just seems like that's gone in this day and age. And y'all have to be able to navigate yourself. You know, you need to be able to navigate these worlds. You need to be able to protect yourself. So let's just summarize real quick. Hurt people hurt people. Bullying is like prolonged negative behavior directed at somebody else. You know, there is you can't bully once. Bullying is something that hope happens over time. You know, it's a, it's a consistent repeat behavior, right? You know, harassment is like, you know, like a moment, a momentary thing. But bullying is something that somebody that's hurt is doing to you or somebody that's emotionally immature that doesn't realize what they are doing to you. The ways that you get around this is, number one, identify your bully, you know, um, see if there's any anything that you could do real quick to just like avoid them. Just try avoiding them, right? If you can't avoid them, if they seek you out, then go get help, especially if you're a teacher or like, especially if you're in school, go get you a teacher, go get you a trusted guidance counselor, go grab you an adult, even a janitor will help you out in a, in a, uh, in a school. You feel, you feel what I'm saying? Okay. And then, and then see if you can have a sit down with the person and then, and talk things out. Okay. You might find out that they're actually really cool, but they're going through their own things in their life. You see what I'm saying? But then if that's the case, uh, like especially if it, in the case of internet bullying, screenshot every single negative message that they sent and make sure that you have it in a folder. Make sure you date everything. Make sure that you have this, uh, you have everything. But once again, the school system is kind of wonky sometimes. Sometimes these teachers and these administrators are lazy. Just how there's lazy students, there's lazy teachers too that don't want to do that extra form, that don't want to file that report. Okay, and they'll be like, oh, you just go handle it. Okay, if you if you run into that, of course, just go find another teacher, even a teacher that you don't know. Okay, right. So then after that, and let's just say you try these, you have the proof that doesn't work. Okay, you have to take things into your own hands. Like I said, with the bathroom trick, go to the bathroom like an hour before the class is over, 30 minutes before the class is over, 20 minutes before the class is over. Run to your locker, grab your books, go back to class so you don't have to see them in the hallways, right? If you always go right in the hallway, you go left because they're going to be coming from this way to try to meet you. They're going to try to go this way. So you just wrap around them and you sneak behind them. Boom. Done. You know, I'm like a whole professional ninja out here. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like to do. I like to be unseen, you know? Um... But, the, you know, but then also being realistic now. It's like, but the, Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then sometimes you have to beat them at their own game. If they're name calling, you know, what I really go recommend, go learn your, some, your mama jokes. Go learn how to uh, roast battles. I highly recommend you go. If you're someone that wants to take this route, if like they're calling you names, they're joking you, go watch rap battles. 
Go watch rap battles. Because, yes, don't get me wrong, all they do say is, yo, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to blah, 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 Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. But it's a, but don't go to the violence. You know, but pay attention to how they put things together. See how that joke will really cut somebody if you were to do that in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, don't start rap battling them, but, hey, you might find an avenue. And say, yo, you calling me, you calling me yuck mouth, but, yo, you missing teeth. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? You joking my car, but you ain't got one. They say, yeah, your car is those, those size nines on your feet. Oh, you got some small feet, too. You know, you know what they say about small feet. That's all, they, that's all you got to say, especially if it's guys bullying you. I don't really know how to deal with girl bullying, so forgive me. This is a little bit one-sided, but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? But you see how easy it is? Just flip it around on them. And most of the time, they won't mess with you because they, they, they're not used to people fighting back. They're not prepared for that, and they're going to look stupid and leave you alone. But, of course, there's always, like, the nonviolent ways of doing things. But sometimes, too, there's the point where you have to square up with people. I'm just being real. There's a point where you're going to have to be like, you know what? I have to fight. For I have to fight. I always say do not bring the weapons to school. That is not what we are here to do. You do not pull up to the school and shoot anyone. You do not stab anyone. You do not inflict that level of harm. No matter how bad they made you feel, you have to rise above them. All right? You have to rise above them and you have to also learn how to forgive. You know, I, I wish I didn't forget. I wish I didn't forget that one. But you have to forgive. Yo, you're bullying me because you're hurt. I forgive you, though. What, what, what are you talking about? I forgive you, bro. I forgive you. I forgive you. It's OK. I forgive you. And you just go about your day. You try to walk away from the situation. You have to be the bigger person. Always remember that. Because if you inflict physical harm, if you're the person that shows up to school with the gun, if you're the one that shows up to school with the weapon, you have now sunken beneath them. You are now lower than them and you have to face all the consequences based off of one very bad decision. Leave the weapons at home. Don't even, don't, that, that is not an option. There's too many different ways. And if you don't, if you don't find your option before all the nonviolent ways and even after the square up, then revisit them, recycle them, and get better at those options until, until something works, until something gives. Till the next one, y'all. Peace.